Well, Sam Bankman-Fried remains behind bars in the Bahamas with his next court date scheduled for February 8th. Here to discuss SBF and the latest legal headlines, distinguished university professor at Turo University, Thane Rosenbaum and former assistant DA at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office and Newsmax contributor Amir Benno. Great to see both of you on this lovely Saturday afternoon. Same here. Good to see you too. Thanks for having us. All right, Amir, going to dive in with you here. Uh, Sam Bankman-Fried, what is he facing at this point? I know he said he's going to fight extradition to the United States. Uh, overall, what do you expect the outcome will be? He's going to be behind bars for the rest of his life. Uh, that is what is going to happen here. Uh, I just think it's a quite a foolish move to even try to fight extradition. Uh, he could try, but at the end of the day, he's going to be extradited. He's in terrible conditions in the prison down there in, in Nassau. And uh, when he gets here, that fight, extradition, is going to uh, give ammunition to the prosecutors to tell the judge that he's a flight risk. Uh, and that's going to give even more reason for the judge uh, to remand him. That is to put him in, in uh, pretrial detention, uh, not at liberty. He's going to be held behind bars uh, without bail. Uh, he... The, the, the crimes that he's being charged with, which is the securities fraud, mail fraud, wire fraud, money laundering, uh, when you consider the amount of victims and you consider the number of uh, the, the amount of money involved, uh, the offense level on this under the federal guidelines is off the charts, and he's going to spend the rest of his life behind bars. Hmm. All right, thanks. Switching gears quickly, the January 6th House Committee is set to refer three criminal charges against former President Donald Trump, including insurrection, obstruction of an official proceeding, and conspiracy to defraud the federal government. Uh, what does this mean for the former president? Remember, Katrina, the House Select Committee is just a congressional committee. It has no legal power or legal authority. It only had investigative authority and powers. Uh, it can make a referral, criminal referral, to the Justice Department, in which it's essentially saying, you know, we think that these charges should be brought by the Justice Department. What do you say? The thing is, the Justice Department is already conducting its own investigation, and it's not unfamiliar with any of the three charges you just listed. They've got their own. Now, it might have symbolic significance, Katrina, where uh, the committee, by referring it to the Justice Department, gives them more uh, ammunition or courage or backbone to bring the case, because I think Amir and I are certainly of agreement. This is not an easy case to make against the president because, you know, you can see even in this referral, the committee is like revealing certain issues that it wants the uh, Justice Department to think about in order to adjust the nature of the law to show that the president actually incited the insurrection and that he was somehow involved in an agreement with the rioters. And the evidence of that is very weak. So they're sort of giving the Justice Department, I know it doesn't look like a classic incitement to a riot, but here's the reason why it is. And it doesn't look like a classic conspiracy, but here's the reason why it is, as if it's trying to school the Justice Department. But I'm curious what Amir would say about mm -hmm. this. I'm not sure that under the law that they have very good grounds for these criminal charges against the president. Yeah, Amir, I do want to get your thought on that. And also there are reports that uh, the January 6th committee said there could be additional charges suggested. Yeah, well, I agree with Thane. I think this is a slender read at best. I, the, the obstruction charge, uh, first of all, was never intended for this sort of thing. Uh, it was designed in the fall of Enron uh, to to prosecute people who are who are shred, shredding documents. Uh, and now they're trying to really uh, put that square peg in the round hole uh, and to do it for a former president. The incitement, uh, there's a strong First Amendment argument here that what the president did was protected under Supreme Court precedent, and it wasn't incitement at all. He certainly wasn't one of the people who was actually engaging in insurrection. He wasn't, uh, I don't know how they'll try to uh, eke out that he provided aid and comfort to them. Uh, so really, they have a, a slender theory, which is that he incited the riot. But again, that's a First Amendment protected thing. Um, and like you said, Katrina, I, one of the interesting things in the reporting so far is they haven't mentioned uh, m much of the election aspect of it uh, and whether there was election interference. I was suspecting that that might be where they went with most of their referrals. But it seems like the, the third thing, the conspiracy to defraud the United States, has to do possibly with this slate of... Uh, electors uh, who are not uh, 
chosen, uh, a false slate of electors, but also the political reporting on it suggests that that charge has to do with his signing legal documents and filing uh, uh, complaints, civil complaints, uh, charging election uh, fraud uh, when he was told that there was no merit to those charges, which, again, seems like a very weak case. Mm -hmm. So I agree complete with, with Thane that this is probably just political posturing uh, and nothing more. All right, gentlemen, we have just about a minute left. Want to get your thoughts on another big legal headline. President Biden's non-binary energy advisor has been fired following multiple luggage thefts. Um, Amir, give us the latest and then leave a little time for Thane to wrap it up. Well, I think, he, yeah, he's fired. He, he's he been caught, allegedly. He's uh, stole a couple of very high-value uh, items off of the, the baggage carousels in Minneapolis and, uh, and in Las Vegas. And uh, he they were able to put the pieces together because the video surveillance uh, from those uh, the airports matched mm -hmm. up with his Instagram posts uh, from the same day, the, the, the clothing he was wearing. So I think he's pretty much dead to rights on this. And, uh, you know, I think it was the right thing to do to terminate him. All right, Thane, final thoughts for us. I think he did something even worse than criminal, which he made the progressive movement look really bad. Because mm. now it appears as if some of the stories that he told about his backstory, about how he had to go through forced, torturous conversion therapy, there's now a question that he may have lied about that to ac accentuate the, the, his childhood experiences. Mm. Uh, and so I think that that idea in, in the ways that he might have tarred the LGBT and Q community with a false claim of conversion, forced torturous conversion therapy, when apparently he's refusing to give the name of the person who even did this to him and his own mother is saying that never happened. So I think hmm. these kinds of things really embarrass the progressive movement. So that's a separate reason that I think that he would have needed to resign. It's not just he faces criminal charges. He's facing something in some ways worse, embarrassing the progressive movement in the Biden administration. All right, gentlemen, we're going to leave it there. Great insights as always. Thane Rosenbaum, Amir Benno. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you. And coming up, Ukraine is.